and gentlemen, welcome to the design presentation of Eco Runner Team Delft. Please put your phone on silent, turn your flashlight off, sit back and enjoy. Climate change is happening now on an unprecedented scale. Code red for humanity. It is grim. Would you be able to face yourself knowing you didn't take responsibility? Well, we wouldn't. We believe it's time. Time to face the future. What if we don't settle unless we make a difference? What if we push the limits instead of creating the limits? What if we don't take no for an answer? Is it realistic? Well, it is not without a challenge. Is there still time? There is, if we act now. We are going to face the future. And we need you to join us. We, 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 we are eager on Team Delft. Are you ready to face the future? What we do in the next few years will determine the next few years. Because when it comes to climate, time really is running out. Now must be our moment. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the design presentation of EcoRunner Team Delft. Thank you all very much for coming, and everybody watching at home, thank you all very much for tuning in. Should you have any questions during the presentation, during the live stream, then you can ask them in our live chat, where our, te where our team will be at your full disposal to answer your questions during the presentation. And for everyone attending here, Please leave your questions until after the presentation in the foyer, where we will be happy to answer them while enjoying a cold beverage. My name is Axel Struve, and I'm the team manager of this year's team. And tonight, we will present you the designs for our new car, the Eco 12. And tonight, we will convince you that our car represents transition. We will convince you that our new car represents change. Tonight, we will convince you that our new car represents the future. And we will do so by explaining why we do what we do, how we do it, and how we see our car fitting into the sustainable future that we see before us. Now, we started this presentation with our Face the Future video, displaying several disasters from all over the world, such as droughts, sea level rise, floods, forest fires, and so on. And these disasters all have one thing in common. They are a direct effect of climate change. Climate change is a problem that cannot be overstated. We all know it's happening. We all know, we all know it's here. We see it. We acknowledge it. And what science has proven to us over and over again is that climate change is induced by humans, something we don't really like to hear. And there's one upside to this statement. If climate change is induced by humans, then humans can stop it as well. And this action from humans against climate change can already be recognized in the political agendas of our world leaders, such as the Paris Agreement 2015 or the Glasgow Climate Summit just last year. And we are thrilled to see that countries are already working together to tackle this common enemy. We're thrilled to see that this problem is already so high on the political agenda, where countries work together to form agreements and promise to lower these greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible. But even with these agreements, with these awesome collaborations, the greenhouse gas emissions have never been higher than they are today. Therefore, we believe it's time to really tackle this problem once and for all. It's time to face the future. So emissions are high. How high is high? Well, when we look at the total greenhouse gas emissions, then we can see that over the years they have, exp have increased exp exponentially. And please notice that as of right now, 
this number still hasn't started to drop. And as of just before the year 2000, the emissions were about half as high as they are today. Let me rephrase that. In just about 30 years, the total greenhouse gas emissions annually have doubled. And if we look at these total global emissions, and especially the transport sector within those emissions, then we can see the dire effect that the transport sector has on climate change, on our environment. For example, we all came here today to the campus of the TU Delft. Maybe you drove. Maybe you came by train. But it's not just here. We all go to school, to work. We all go to see our friends, parents, to the grocery store. But it doesn't end there. Maybe you went to the mountains this year to enjoy some snow. Or maybe you took that airplane to go somewhere sunnier. And maybe for your Christmas dinner, you ordered that cute Christmas outfit online. Humanity simply creates so much transport that we don't really seem to understand the impact that this sector has. Did you know, for example, that right now there are approximately 1.4 billion automotive vehicles out there running on fossil fuels? 1.4 billion. And we all know that the aviation sector is very damaging to our environment, right? And you'd be correct. Per flight, there is a lot of emission. But did you know that that 1.4 billion pollutes approximately four times more than the entire aviation sector does? And did you know that altogether, the entire transport sector is responsible for more than 25% of the total global greenhouse gas emissions. That's a quarter of the entire problem, just to get from A to B. And of that 25%, we can see that the automotive sector is responsible for 75% of the emissions. In other words, if we look at the bigger picture, we know that this needs to change. We need to start using less energy. EcoRunner Team Delft believes that it's time to stop this increasingly addicted addi addiction to energy use. Especially in the automotive sector. And we can do so by building our vehicles to be smaller, lighter, and more aerodynamic. Thus creating vehicles that need much less fuel to go the same distance. And those smaller, more efficient vehicles we believe to be the future of mobility. Especially in applications where vehicles don't need to be as heavy and as comfortable as they are right now. But we'll get, back, we get back to that later. Now eventually we know that just using less energy won't solve the problem. Eventually the entire, the entire transport sector the entire energy system for that matter, will have to switch to sustainable energy. Now, sustainable energy is an increasingly hot topic these days. You see it all around you in the news, solar panels, windmills, maybe even nuclear energy is increasing in popularity by the day. And these are great developments because these innovations supply us with green electricity, which is at the base of a lot of green energy applications. And to store and use green energy within our car, EcoRunner Team Delft has been using hydrogen for years now. And we choose hydrogen because hydrogen can be produced safely and completely green through a process called electrolysis. You may have heard of it. And in this process, the water molecules are split into hydrogen molecules and oxygen molecules with the help of the previously mentioned green electricity. Using green electricity to form hydrogen, where the only byproduct is breathable oxygen, makes the produced hydrogen completely sustainable. Therefore, we refer to it as green hydrogen. So green electricity is used to create green hydrogen. Now within our car, we can reverse this process. 
we can let the hydrogen react with oxygen to form electricity. And in that process, the only byproduct is water. This reaction takes place in a fuel cell. The fuel cell can thus take the hydrogen and create electricity. And that electricity can then be sent to our electrical motor. The cycle is now complete. We've used water and green electricity to form green hydrogen. We use that hydrogen to create electricity and water again, all in a green way. Hydrogen is safe, cheap, easy to use, but most importantly, a completely green way of using and storing energy. Sounds good, right? So why haven't we widely implemented the use of hydrogen yet in today's society? Here's the problem. If you want to build an energy market from the ground up, where do you start? For example, in the automotive sector, do you start with building a lot of hydrogen cars when there might not be enough refueling stations? Or do you start with building a lot of refueling stations when there might not be enough cars to use them? Maybe you'll start with building both when there might not be enough green hydrogen to supply this market. Or what if you start using, start generating a lot of green hydrogen without there being a market for it? Now all these questions point to the same problem and solution at the same time. And that is that the hydrogen market needs to grow in order for us to use hydrogen and in order for hydrogen to play the key role that we see it playing in the energy transition in the future. Start somewhere, start everywhere. And this overall growth is one of the driving factors for, for EcoRunner Team Delft to use hydrogen. We aim to contribute to this growth, to speed up this growth, by promoting hydrogen as the fuel of the future. And we do so by using hydrogen as our fuel and therefore showing the upsides of using hydrogen when you use it in the right way. Now, 15 years ago, some of the brightest minds of the Delft University of Technology got together because they recognized the problem of the transport sector. They recognized the problem of inefficiency and pollution. And they came together and built a car that would prove to the world that the transport sector doesn't have to be as inefficient and polluting as it is today. And with that ideology, EcoRunner Team Delft was born. And now, 15 years later, we, EcoRunner 12, are ready to continue this legacy. Now, over the years, we've switched to hydrogen to promote green fuels. Over the years, we've switched to urban vehicles to make the project more feasible. And over the years, we have become proud to say that we are one of the front runners in automotive efficiency. Now, our vehicles push the boundaries of this innovation and of this vehicle efficiency to the absolute limit. And that is not just any project. Because in this project, within one year, we design, produce, test, and race a highly functional prototype car that can drive thousands of kilometers on just one small tank of hydrogen. A world record breaking car. Now, such an immensely complex project requires a team, a smart, motivated, hardworking team with a fierce passion for contributing to a sustainable future. And that this year's team consists of 23 students from the Delft University of Technology, who've put their studies aside and put their heart and soul into creating the car of the future. And I can honestly say it's been an absolute pleasure working with these people over the past few months. Now, it seems rather impossible to build a fully functioning, highly functioning prototype car in just one year, with just over 23, 20 students who have little to no experience in this field. Yet year after year, we managed to pull it off, which might be even stranger considering that we don't get paid or receive any study credits for it. So how do we do it? Well, if you remove these external motivators, such as money, then what you're left with to motivate yourself is your own ambition and your own will to find out how far you can go, what you can do, where your own limit is. 
And if there's anything that I've learned this year as a team manager, then it is that if you put a group of ambitious people together and you allow them to decide how high they want to put the bar, instead of putting it somewhere for them, then absolutely anything is possible. And if you combine the right ideologies of efficiency and hydrogen with a motivated, hardworking team, and you add to that the expertise and the help of our partners, then the result, ladies and gentlemen, is the ECO-12. Okay, so here it is. So this is the eCorona 12, and I'm proud to say that it is our most efficient hydrogen-powered city car yet. My name is Ethan Kloppenburg. I'm the chief engineer of eCorona, and tonight I will take you through our design. Over the past five months, our engineers have been busy designing each and every part in the car, where each part was designed to be as efficient and lightweight as possible. Each part designed towards the edge of what technology can do, of what we can do. Now, before I explain why it is so important that our car is lightweight and efficient, I will quickly take you through our concept. So here's our car that drives on hydrogen. Let's start with the powertrain. The powertrain converts hydrogen in our car to movement. Now, once the car is moving, we need to be able to control this movement. And this is where vehicle dynamics comes in. Now, everything needs to be physically connected, and the driver needs to be kept safe. And for this, we need a strong and lightweight bodywork. Now, this bodywork also functions to reduce the aerodynamic drag. Now, the electronics and strategy in our car truly bring the car to life and make it run as efficient as possible. So, altogether, we've created a highly efficient, extremely lightweight car which drives on hydrogen. And as a chief engineer, it is my responsibility to make sure that all parts fit together. But how do these parts work, and how do they work together? Well, to answer these questions, we will take a deep dive into our design this evening. And we will start off by taking a look at the powertrain. And for that, I would like to introduce you to Mace, our chief powertrain. He will tell you every in and out of the powertrain design of this year. Hi, I'm Mace Nook, the chief powertrain. The powertrain system provides the car with exactly the right amount of energy to make sure that the car perfectly responds to the driver's commands, such as accelerating or braking. The powertrain system connects the hydrogen tank to the fuel cell and eventually to the electric motor. Our powertrain system starts off with the hydrogen tank, which provides hydrogen gas to the fuel cell. The fuel cell then converts this hydrogen gas to electricity. 
and the only byproduct in this process is water, which makes it a completely green process. Our fuel cell is highly efficient. We even push the boundaries of this efficiency by influencing the circumstances of the fuel cell, such as the humidity. Our fuel cell has a certain working point at which it works the most efficiently. In order to have the fuel cell running at this power output, we implemented a DC-DC converter which regulates the power output of the fuel cell. Another function of this DC-DC converter is that it converts the operating voltage of the fuel cell to that of the supercapacitors, which is the next part of our powertrain. The supercapacitors act as an energy buffer in which we can temporarily store electricity. This is needed because at some moments the motor may demand more energy than the fuel cell can deliver, such as, uh, for example, when accelerating. In such cases, the motor can draw electricity directly from the supercapacitors instead of from the fuel cell, which allows us to have the fuel cell running at its most efficient point, which, as said, was regulated by the DC-DC converter. Using this configuration, we can make sure that the motor always gets the perfect amount of energy. Together with a partner, we developed a new electric motor. And by placing this motor in the right rear wheel of the car, we can eliminate any form of transmission. Transmission is normally needed to transfer the movement generated by the motor to that of the axle of the wheel. But by eliminating this transmission, we also eliminate any energy losses that would normally be accompanied with it. This year, we also had a look at the regenerative braking system and we increased it significantly. This system allows us to convert energy, which would normally be lost during standard braking, back into electricity, which we can use to power the car again. This motor will be the most efficient one yet. Thank you, Mace. So, as Mace explained, the powertrain is really the energy conversion in our car. And the fuel cell is at the heart of this system. Now, this means that the fuel cell's efficiency plays a big part in the car's overall efficiency. And with this year's design, we've really been able to push this efficiency up to the limit of what is practically achievable. Now, efficiently generated green electricity on its own and movement of the motor means nothing without a way to guide it. Now, the system which safely guides the car, yet is as lightweight and efficient as possible, that is the responsibility of our vehicle dynamics department. Now, Tom will tell you all about this vehicle dynamics department. Hi, my name is Tom Vreugdenhiel, the chief vehicle dynamics. On the past few months, we've been working on transferring the forces while driving from the road to the car. These forces include the bumps in the road while driving or drag while cornering. The vehicle dynamics of our car consists of the front suspension, the rear suspension, the steering system, the brakes and the wheels. Our wheels are made from aluminum, a very light but strong metal. The rims are designed to fit our specially made highly efficient tires. Within these wheels, we place the brakes. And these consist of a braking caliper, a brake disc and a lightweight hydraulic pressure system. The front suspension uses a double wishbone, the triangular tubes connecting the wheel to the bodywork. This construction is very small and very light due to the use of carbon fiber tubes. The rear suspension uses a trailing arm configuration with a pneumatic gas spring to lift the car up. Within this spring, there are hydraulic dampers to minimize vibrations while driving as much as possible. For the steering system, we chose to use carbon fiber only to minimize weight. When the driver steers, the wheels will rotate by transferring the rotation into a linear back and forwards motion using push rods and linkages. We implemented the Ackermann system. This system makes sure that the front wheels rotate at a slightly different angle 
and this creates one rotation center. With one rotation center for the entire car, we can minimize slip while cornering as much as possible. These five subsystems are made to fit together perfectly. Altogether, they create a smooth transition from the road to our car while providing as much traction as possible. Thank you, Tom. So the vehicle dynamics form the guiding system of our car. And with this year's design, by minimizing weight and slippage, they've been able to immensely improve the efficiency of this department. Now, in order for our car to drive efficiently, we also needed to be aerodynamic and needed to maintain its structural integrity. So we need a skeleton which can withstand the forces applied to it, it can secure the driver in it and all the subsystems inside, and it needs to physically connect all the subsystems and all the parts in the car. So in conclusion, we need a bodywork. And to explain to you how our bodywork functions, I would like to introduce you to our chief bodywork, Martijn. Hi, my name is Martijn Kanger. I'm the chief bodywork of Acorn and Team Delft. The body department is responsible for the aero shell as well as the load carrying structure of our car. Air resistance is a large factor in the total resistance of our car. Therefore, it's essential that we give our car an aerodynamic optimal shape. From the top, you can see our car is shaped like a water droplet. This allows the air to nicely follow the curvature of the car and it prevents a turbulent wake. From the front, you can see that air can flow underneath the car. This reduces the frontal surface area and contributes to our extremely low aerodynamic drag. The structure of our car is designed to be lightweight, stiff and strong. Every part is designed to be load carrying, even the seat that the driver is sat in. The mandatory bulkhead and dash blades carry significant loads during braking, accelerating and steering. And these parts are optimized by closely looking at the stresses in these parts and locally applying stiffening elements. And this ensures that all our parts are, are only just as strong as they need to be. Our car is made of carbon fibers. These fibers are extremely thin, about 12 times thinner than a human hair, but they are extremely lightweight, stiff and strong. Because our car has such a complex compound curve geometry, these carbon fibers are an excellent material choice because these fibers are flexible before they are baked in the oven. Using a material like carbon fiber allows us to significantly reduce our mass and thus contributes to our extremely high efficiency. Thank you, Martijn. So with our bodywork, similar to that of an F1 concept, where the aero shell also functions as the structure of the car, our car is now complete and more efficient than ever. But an efficient car on its own is not enough. If we drive our car too fast or take too sharp a corner, we can still lose a lot of energy due to drag and slippage. Besides, we also want to drive as few meters on the track and drive the ideal racing line for our specific car. So we need to create a strategy which, which fulfills these tasks. And that is the responsibility of our electronics and strategy department. And SACE will tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Sees Wolfs, electronics engineer of EcoRunner Team Delft. Our department provides the software and handles the communication between the software and the hardware within the car. To race as efficiently as possible, we determine the perfect strategy beforehand. This strategy finds the optimal race line and the right velocity for each point in the track. All while maintaining a minimum average velocity of 25 km per hour, as demanded by the rules of our competition. Once this strategy is determined, it is loaded onto a computer that is attached to the steering wheel of the car. This computer then takes the model and the location of the car and determines 
what velocity the car should have. It then communicates how much power is required from the motor to achieve the desired velocity. This all happens autonomously. The car handles its own velocity without any input from the driver. The driver only needs to steer to keep the car on the right path. This unique system is what we call the autonomous cruise control system. The electronics of the car also handle the safety systems. In the event of a hydrogen leak, the entire car and the hydrogen supply are shut down. The system can also be activated manually by pushing any of the two physical buttons on the car. Thank you, Sees. So while all other departments were busy researching the possibilities we had to improve our car's efficiency, the strategy department was busy trying to improve the model of our car with the basis of last year's model. Now with this improved model, we could perfectly predict the efficiencies measured during test drives of last year. Now this meant that we could perfectly predict what a design would, what the impact of a design would be on the car's overall efficiency. So we could make the trade-off between a design which was 1% more aerodynamic or the design which weighed a kilogram less. Now, as our chiefs explained, our car really focuses on efficiency. But why? Well, it's simple. The more efficient we are, the less fuel we use. We want to drive as many kilometers on the least amount of hydrogen. And although this is only the third year that EcoRunner is participating in this particular vehicle class, we not only think that we've designed a car which can truly compete for a first place in our competition, but more importantly, we think we've designed a car which really shows what high efficiencies can be, the, uh, can be achieved when a car design is more focused towards efficiency. Now, last year's car design was 65 times more efficient than your average road car. And this year's design will be even more. Now, considering we're a team of students where every single one of us hasn't finished their study yet, I think that is something to be incredibly proud of. Now, having said that, a major reason why we build our car is because we want to contribute to a greener future. Now, our operations manager, Emma Zadeit, will tell you more about this. Thank you, Eitan, for showing us the improvements that are made this year. This could mean remarkable things for future mobility, because where we are right now, changes need to be made in the mobility sector. It would be a shame if we don't use our car and its achievements to promote a sustainable future. We do not only aspire to get the most out of our technical aspects, we also want to inspire and activate people and businesses to contribute to a greener tomorrow. A greener tomorrow starts by looking at yourself, your habits, and your way of living. Sometimes we get so caught up in the new extremely bright forms of technology that are presented to us every single day, we forget to stop for a second and think about the downsides of all these innovations. So how do we inspire and activate people to change their perspective? Well, first, I'd like to lay out some facts about the current situation in the transport sector and then I will show you that the problems we see today don't have to be there when we apply our concepts. When we look at the development of energy use in the automotive sector over the last centuries, it only became twice as efficient. This is an extremely slow progression compared to other technologies. For example, take the development of cell phones over the last 15 years. So why is this progression so slow? Well, we see that there's one big bottleneck. 
and that is the weight of our cars. Our current road cars are extremely heavy. At this moment, taking the average weight of a person and the average weight of a car, traveling alone, you are only 6% of the entire weight being transported. When we take the average weight of a person and our eco-runner 12, you are 50% of the entire weight. This is a big contributor to your energy use. So where does all of this weight come from? Well, we as humans have become addicted to using energy. Since electricity was innovated, we see that exponentially started using more and more energy, and this growth is still happening. We can also see it in the cars that are being produced today, when looking at all the space and comfort in these cars. So think about it. If we really want to use less fuel, we'll need to lower the mass of our cars and change its aerodynamics. We can do so by making concessions in comfort. Do you really need a car with five seats when commuting to work? Especially given the fact that on average there's only 1.4 person in a car in urban areas. Do you really need a car with built-in television screens or with a bigger sound system that you can even imagine possible for a car? Our EcoRunner 12 is the physical translation of possibilities for future transport. We need to make a 180 because we are at a critical point right now. Car pollution doesn't only affect our planet and our environment, it also damages our own health. During the strict COVID-19 lockdowns, it became painfully clear how clean the world can be when we as humans stop moving completely. The thick curtains of smog above cities vanished. There were no more traffic congestions where cars emit unnecessary amounts of carbon dioxide. And inhabitants of big cities were able to see clear skies again. However, not moving completely is unrealistic and undesirable. Therefore, we need to change the way we move and the energy source we use to move. So now we've concluded that the mass and the aerodynamics are extremely important. But what about that energy source I've talked about? Hydrogen is not yet widely used in commercial cars, although it has many benefits. It has an extremely long range, and refueling can be done in around the same time as our fossil-fueled cars. Additionally, at this moment, a kilogram of hydrogen is 10 euros, and this is estimated to drop below one euro in 2050. When we take that one kilogram of hydrogen and our 12th EcoRunner, we see that we can drive from Delft, passing many European highlights, all the way to the most southern point of Spain, Gibraltar. Now, this is an extreme design of a city car. It can travel thousands of kilometers without refueling. But take a moment to think about what we could do with your car that is sitting in your driveway at this moment. What if we applied our concept? If we made your family car more aerodynamic, lighter, and fueled by hydrogen? Making a car more aerodynamic and lighter is easier than you might think. When we adapt our expectations of private transport, possibilities open up for sustainable creations. When we realize we can also get from A to B without all of these extras, future designs of cars can be more efficient, contributing to a greener future. However, if we really want to make an impact on the environment, it is important that not only city cars, but also heavier transport, for instance, the shipping industry or distribution trucks, make the shift towards green fuels. With our project, we try to emphasize the extraordinary possibilities of an efficient design and of the fuel hydrogen have by going to the extremes. Cities could flourish again. As I've said before, the change has already been initiated. 
That's why one of our biggest team goals is to inspire and activate all people we reach to make their own change and to make no matter how big or how small. We hope that today we've inspired you to join us on our journey and that together we are able to face the future. Thank you, Emma. All right, so we have our message and we now have the car to prove our message. So all that's left to do is to go out, build that car and prove it. Now we are a competitive student team, eager to show the world what we are capable of, what our car is capable of. Luckily, there is a competition out there that allows us to race and eventually win. Luckily, sorry, what better way to boost technological advancements than to make a sport out of it? A place where you constantly encourage each other to push the limits, to go further, to improve your technology, to win. We wouldn't be a competitive student team if we did not have the opportunity to win. Of course we want to win. And that's exactly what we're going to do this year. Because this year, we are going to compete in the Shell Eco Marathon, one of the world's most huge uh, student competitions out there. And this competition will take place on the TT circuit in Asse, famous for, famous for the MotoGP every year. It will take place on June 1st until June 3rd. And within our sector of Europe and Africa, 77 European and African teams will come to the Netherlands, allowing us to beat them on our own turf. And if the COVID-19 measurements allow it, you are all invited to this event to cheer us on. And at this event, we will battle, we will race for the title of world's most efficient hydrogen-powered city car, which is our ultimate team goal. But EcoRunner Team Delft strives further than that. So at this competition, our efficiency is measured over a relatively short distance. And we believe that our car is made to do more than that. It's made to drive extremely far on extremely little fuel, therefore directly proving our message. And that's exactly what we're going to do. This year, after the Shell Eco Marathon, we are going to attempt to break the world record for distance driving on one tank of hydrogen fuel. Now, if you want to know more about this world record attempt, then you are hereby all invited to our car reveal later this year in May, where we will elaborate more on our future plans. I would like to take this moment to thank our partners. Because without the help, without the expertise, but especially without the generosity of all these partners, this project would not be possible. We would not be standing here today. So now, We've come to an end, and there's nothing left for me to say, except for to introduce you all to my team. So please join me in giving them a huge, well-deserved applause. First of all, the Bodywork Department. Powertrain. Vehicle Dynamics. Electronics and Strategy. Operations. And last but not least, Management. We are Acre Honor Team Delft. Thank you for your attention. Go, 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 go.
Any day. Put your trust in me. I'll give you everything. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Let's enjoy some cold beverages in the foyer. Thank you. Where I want to be, be. 